Guys, welcome back to another episode, of course, of Arsenio's ESL Podcast. I'm so grateful to be back with you today, and today is going to be a relatively short podcast. However, I do have a nice sneak peek coming up tomorrow for you guys. Stay tuned for that. But you know what? Today's about synonyms and antonyms. See, when you're speaking, it doesn't matter. You you know, the thing... For my Americans out there who listen to me, it's very important to stay away from very, very big words that people will not understand, okay? Now, I know there are a lot of people out there that like to use big words to try to claim superiority over another individual in terms of speaking. Honestly, when you use big words that people do not understand, it just makes you look like an ass. Unless you're going to explain it, but even if you're not a teacher, you shouldn't be explaining what words you're using. All right, so I've been around those people. I've been around those people even in uh, 11th grade and 12th grade, and these guys would say some of the biggest words, and I'm like, oh, my God, I don't understand that. Does that mean I'm stupid? No, that just means that he wants to act like he is more alpha than you are. So first and foremost, when you use synonyms, okay, now in terms of writing, that's okay. All right, so if I use a word such as interesting, now interesting, it could be enthralling however you actually use the word enthralling when you're describing either let's say a journey or probably a movie or an amazing holiday exhilarating again you won't say that in ordinary speech i don't know if you guys do but that's not something i would say to especially my students all right that's something that's not something i would say in front of a bunch of suit jackets and ties either so it's very very important guys to Use language that that relates to the situations that you are in. Now, if you want to talk about, ooh, that's a very compelling argument. If you're like a professor at the university somewhere out there in, you know, in America, by all means, that's okay. But going with just regular household synonyms so it could ultimately – you know, it shows that you have a range of vocabulary and you're not recycling is the best thing to do. All right, so if we go into what antonyms are, antonyms are basically the opposite of synonyms, all right? So for those of you out there who do, you know, writing prompts or writing in general or IELTS writing task and this and that, if you look at some of these, if we look at the word advantage, all right, a synonym would be benefit, and obviously the antonym would be disadvantage. So if you get an easy word, like let's say on a writing prompt or on a write, uh, on an IELTS writing task too, they say name or list the advantages and the disadvantages. This is actually very, very easy uh, because now you understand, oh, advantages, disadvantages. With the prefix dis, it's taken away from what the advantage real meaning is and flipping it completely opposite, therefore making it. The disadvantages. Now, another synonym would be benefits. Another antonym would be drawbacks. What are the disadvantages? What are the drawbacks? Now, if we talk about something in the realm of wealthiness, all right, or being wealthy or wealthier, whatever you want to call it, a synonym for wealthy is richer, okay? Now, richer, rich, richest, right? So that's a comparative adjective. So what is a comparative antonym? For the word richer, poorer. It's a lot of people say that. They always say the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. All right? It's that type of mental condition and an attitude that never allows a human being to escape from the problems that he is in. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, guys, what I have on my blog are a couple of things, right? Basically, what you want to do, the words that are italicized, I want you to put them into the five categories down below. Now, let me list these five categories for you. Urban, similar to, considerable, modern, and realistic, okay? Realistic. Now, the words that are italicized are ancient, current, different to, idealistic, Insignificant, like, metropolitan, practical, rural, and significant. All right? Now, you're going to listen to those or write them down, okay? Listen to it again. Write them down and put them into the categories down below, all right? So this gives you a good idea. So urban, uh, the, a synonym for urban would be metropolitan. 
an antonym for that would be rural, right? So that's the opposite. Urban is where I am right now in Bangkok. This is urban, but if you go just outside or probably an hour to an hour and a half north, it's a place in the most historical side well, – one of the most historical sides of Thailand. It's called Ayutthaya. That is rural. That is the ancient. That is all of that in a bag of tricks. Do you understand what I'm saying? So let's do that again. Metropolitan and urban. If you're doing a writing prompt, don't repeat the word urban. Just go with metropolitan. All right? Now, if you want to get extreme adjectives to even describe it or intensify it or detensify it, you can do that too. All right? Opposite of urban is rural. Similar to, different to, right? Uh, considerable, modern, realistic. These are different things, again, that you can um, – that you can use in your writing. So again, you have synonyms, you have antonyms, you have a little bit of a writing prompt, and I do urge all of you to seriously do this specific um, do this specific exercise. Use these words in your writing. Now, again, when you're speaking, you don't have to use these words. I'm not one of those people that say, "Yeah, I know a big word today." That's no, that's not how it works out here in a non-native English speaking country. All right. And nor do I even use big words when I am speaking, all right? I speak at probably a 0 0.8 speed so you guys can understand, and uh, I use – I just differentiate my words while speaking. That's all I do. I don't use big words and have you guys go, huh? What did he say? That's ridiculous. You are non-native English speakers. Now, for those of you in America who are listening to me, well, thank you so much, but again – I'm not one of those crazy professors out there that stand there and say, oh, the, the, the Mastastidis and the Koskoskitsis, that's ridiculous, okay? So with that being said, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to another podcast. We've already topped off the week, man. It's been a marvelous Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Got a nice speak, uh, sneak peek coming up on Saturday, and we'll see what happens for Sunday. So stay tuned for that. And as always, I'm your host, Arsenio. Over and out.